Money is one of the biggest reported sources of stress and anxiety in the UK and the financial upheaval over the last year has had a huge impact on our mental health and well-being. So we're delighted to introduce Alex Partridge, Wage Stream's Wellbeing Ambassador and Partnership Director, who incidentally is also a former member of the British rowing team and two-time Olympic medalist. Joining Alex today is Nicholas Agruncha, co-founder of Money Medics, an infotainment platform that aims to educate millennials on all aspects of personal finance. Today, they're going to give you plenty of tips and advice to help look after your financial well-being and feel back in control of your money. Well, Amy, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Alex Partridge. I'm the Wellbeing Ambassador for WageStream. Uh, it's great to be here today um, uh, to talk about financial well-being with our special guest. Um, WageStream is a uh, social enterprise fintech, and we've got a very simple mission. So our mission is to uh, have every working person uh, around the world be able to have complete financial freedom by giving them power over their pay and uh, better tools for financial autonomy. So I've got a special guest today here, um, and I'm going to hand over. Oh, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, hi, everyone. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. Um, I'm Nick Agwincha, a co-founder of Money Medics, an infotainment platform that focuses on millennial money management. Uh, so I have a career that spans retail banking, investment banking. I guess through that journey, I've just really developed a passion for uh, financial well-being across my retail banking journey. Um, so yeah. If you're wondering who I am and if I'm qualified to do this, so I guess uh, by the age of 25, I was able to get onto the property ladder. I built quite a sizable investment portfolio and I had my fair trials and tribulations of financial well-being, mental health. So I really want to share this journey and demystify that we're all on our own personal journey, but it can be done through this presentation. But of course, um, I'm not here to give you a, a rags to riches story. I'm not here to tell you to quit your job. Um, at the end of the day, um, having a job is a, is a good and steady way to kind of um, progress through your own financial journey. But I am here to kind of give you quick and dirty tricks you can use to improve your financial well-being. So of course, um, you guys are wondering, like, what is the, the biggest hack when it comes to financial well-being? Believe it or not, it's not tactics, it's not tricks, but it has everything to do with your mind. So what I've kind of mapped out really quite quickly is that the best way to create sustainable change is around developing financial well-being around your identity and your beliefs and values. And what that means is having values like not comparing yourself to other people, living below your, your means is the, is the best way to create sustainable change as opposed to thinking about every type of saving hack you can think about under the sun. So for you, Alex, when you think about beliefs and values, what comes to mind or what drives you on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, well, it's a really good question because I think beliefs and values are really what make, up, make us who we are. Um, I think a lot of people go through life without really thinking about what are their beliefs and values. Some of, the, some of them are just imposed on them by whether it's uh, religion or parents. Or, but actually, one of the biggest lessons I learned in life was taking the time to really understand, okay, what are my values? Who am I? And then that drives all of my other behaviors and decisions. Um, and allows me to do the things that make me the best person I could possibly be. Perfect, perfect. And, and for me, personally speaking, I think um, once I remove the idea of comparing myself to other people, I think I was a lot happier uh, in the long run. And, and what I mean by that is that we're in an environment of social media. It's very easy when you look across someone's feed or you look across the internet that you kind of um, want those things. and. I think um, there was a book I read recently uh, by Morgan Hassel, it's called The Psychology of Money. And it, it, it actually says that when it comes to material things, funny enough, people don't actually want to be the, the person, they actually just want the things. So I think it's just really taking a step back and really evaluating what makes you happy. So as of course, I've kind of 
mapped out already that everything starts in your mind. So in, in kind of helping us go through that journey, I'm just gonna go through a very simple exercise anybody, anyone can do to create or their value system and map that to their goals. So of course, this is not an exhaustive list of values, but it's just different things you can do. So for example, the things that resonate with me is that um, I see money as a tool, as a source of freedom. So having an emergency fund is very key. So I'm not sure, do any of these values resonate with you, Alex? Because I know you're, you're an ex-Olympian, so I'm quite keen to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I, I, think, I think they're fantastic. I think that you know, security, freedom, health, uh, are all great core values to have. Uh, giving back to society. Um, I went through a very difficult time in my life, and 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 some of these uh, pillars are 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 kind of were crucial to my me getting back to a better better person. Um, I think. Uh, particularly, you know, one of my my core value sets is is physical health. If I don't have that in place in my life every day, then I'm definitely not the better person that I, that, that I am, and I'm not able to focus on uh, making those better decisions. And and actually, you know, making health a priority as my value means that then I think about okay, right, well, part of my money needs to go towards being being able to do things that make me physically healthy. I try to make as much free as possible, but you still need certain things at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, security for my family, that's a core value for me. So I want to be, able to be able to make sure that they're secure. But if I really, really think about that, and I think about how I've thought about my money in the past, I haven't really taken that connection to, this is my value set, and this is why I'm earning money, to fulfill these things. It's a, I earn money, and then I fulfill these things. But then, since we spoke uh, you know, a while ago, taking that and actually putting it at the forefront of, okay, these are my values and these are my financial goals against those values, mm. has really completely been liberating. Mm -hmm. so, so I just like, from, from hearing that guys, I think it's very, very important that the easiest way to kind of get on top of your money when it comes to, especially your mindset and your mind, is thinking about how you budget your time and attention and once you think about that process, it then kind of trickles down into how you spend your money. And of course, this is, isn't an exhaustive list. So what I've done, anyone can do this at home or, or right, right now, in, fa in fact, is really kind of understanding to yourself, what is the purpose of money in your life? Um, and from that, you can start to kind of map out key things that drive your own personal values. And then once you've done that, you can actually start writing down goals. So if it's to become healthier, do you, do you need a gym subscription or do you need a personal trainer or do you need to um, go online and, and watch some of those uh, classes that are available? So there's different things you can do to kind of work toward those goals. And I think the thing is, is that it's a daily process. But of course, um, in every fashion, um, one aspect is the mind and the other aspect is the doing. But the reality is, is that we live in such a, a multifaceted society whereby either you're working or you've got childcare or, or, or you're just trying to get through life, so, which leaves us very, very busy. So I think you, you had your own angle in terms of like, when you look at, um, especially lockdown, what is being too busy or how has being too busy affected your day to day? when it comes to making decisions? Well, I think, I think that uh, we're always too busy, uh, especially you know, if you have a family. I mean, even if you don't have a family, you always find all the other things that you can do before you do the things that you don't necessarily want to do. And I think uh, money or, or addressing money for a lot of people is a challenge because it can be quite a scary thing. Mm. Um, and so you will think of all the other things you can do before you actually address and make a small step or a small change or just you know, actually go into your bank machine and look at what your bank balance is and understand your current situation. And this is one of the things that we're trying to do with WageStream is actually we're trying to change that relationship for people with their money and make a friend of money um, and make it as simple as possible but the reality is, at the end of the day, it's the same thing with all things that you're scared of, is you always find another reason not to do it. <laughs> I 100% agree with you. And this is why at Money Makes, what we've done is kind of really mapped out on a page simple things you can do from easy to hard that allows you to t uh, stay on top of your finances. Because the reality is we're all in a journey. I really don't want people to think that 
regardless of your situation and your circumstances, that you can't do one thing or a small thing to make progress towards your financial <coughs> journey. So going from level one, it's really the very, very core basic principle is just understanding your, your income sources. The, the second thing when you look across spending is that, of course, um, we're, we're moving in a world where things are becoming uh, cashless. So even if you're not a fan of the traditional spreadsheet, there are lots of different apps you can use, uh, whether but some of my uh, things I've used or uh, I know apps that other people have used, such as Money Dashboard or, or Yolt or your banking apps, uh, those you can use to help track your expenses. And of course, I think a very pivotal thing is you won't understand where you're going unless you have goals. And so that's why I've mapped out quite clearly short, medium and long term goals. And those can mean different things to different people. So looking at my finances, for example, when I think about short term goals is building my emergency fund to uh, a certain amount. And based on my experience of being out of work, I, I think for me, having an emergency fund is not just having like three to six months, but actually having nine months. Um, another short-term goal is potentially when things decide to open up, um, thinking of uh, taking my wife to any part of the countryside or something. So something I, I put aside is having a short-term holiday fund. And of course, when it comes to long-term uh, goals, investing um, or essentially uh, entrepreneurship. So those are different things you can kind of cut your money into different uh, bits and pieces so it's allocated and it, pre it prevents uh, frivolous spending and of course investing and I have now I've listed quite clearly the, the different investing types but I think a key takeaway or something to kind of really hone in, hone in on is investing in yourself and when I say investing in yourself sometimes it can mean taking a course, reading a book, uh, building up certain relationships in the long run that can add to your human capital. So when you look on the page, Alex, is there anything that particularly resonates with you? Or because I know you've, um, you've mentioned a few times how um, saving or how the spending in your household has changed over the lockdown. So I'm quite keen to hear your thoughts. Well, I mean, uh, well, first, what I was going to say is I think that this is an incredibly powerful matrix of decisions that people can make or actions that people can make to improve their circumstance. And it doesn't mean it, it, it can prove your circumstance from whatever position you're in, because it doesn't you know, you don't have to just be OK with money. And this is going to make you into a much more positive place. You might be in a very, very dire situation, but there's lots of things here that can help you move along that improvement curve. I've been there myself where it's bleak. But if you take some of these steps, it does get better. I think the biggest thing for me is, is, is actually just the first two boxes, is really understanding your income. Like, what is it? What is it on a monthly basis? What is it on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, if you really understand what you earn on a day-to-day, -to -day, then you have a really good idea of what you're spending on a day-to-day. -day. That becomes a really, really easy goal. Um, and you can control that. You can control that really well. But actually, like you just said, we're becoming a cashless society. You know, understanding your expenses is is as a nightmare <laughs> because you have electricity bills that go out you might have you might have a phone bill you might have rent you might have mortgage you might have um, subscriptions to all the different uh, TV applications now that seem to have entered my life that we've <laughs> now spent nearly a year locked up inside I swore I would never get this this subscription to Disney but it seems to have happened um, and so suddenly that becomes just this broad net of things going out that you can't really control uh, or have a great grasp of so if you can start to understand that really quickly, then you can build a much better picture to make it much simpler for you to be able to then actually start making progress towards that longer term financial improvement. Perfect, perfect. And, and of course, I think the, the thing I really want to hone in on is that everyone is in a different situation. So I really do want to kind of hone in on the fact that if you are anxious about where you are in terms of your employment status, I've kind of mapped out quite clearly kind of steps you can take if you've softened a loss of income or you're scared um, you may not have a job um, at the end of uh, when we come out of lockdown. These are just key steps you can take. And speaking from experience, I, I think um, I'll be candid and honest with you guys is uh, there was a period of time when I was out of work for uh, four or five months and off the back of uh, getting married, it was a lot to take in. and. 
that really impacted my my mental health. And so opening up to, to friends and family about my current situation, um, undergoing some form of therapy on a regular basis, just having a, an objective voice to, to speak to. So there are free services to utilize from the NHS. And I think I've, I've learned a lot of the, about the services offered by the NHS through my wife, she's, she's a pharmacist. So I think it's very, very important to utilize free resources that are out, out there. I know beyond furlough, there are key schemes such as the JETS, so if uh, you, you are in a situation whereby you are, you are out of work, there is a scheme by the government that allows you to go back into work straight away through short-term employment placements. And of course, what's starting next month is the life, uh, life Skills Guarantee Scheme, which allows you to reskill and go for a brand new qualification similar to like uh, taking an A-level. Um, and I know you mentioned the Retail Trust have specific things in place or they have a few yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's why we, you know we at Waystream really, you know, find it so valuable to be part of uh, the retail trust because they are a resource for an industry that has been drastically impacted during this time, um, and they're a resource that people should use to call. Because I think the the most important thing, Nick, that you can say in this is that mental health is 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 something that is there. Mental health is part of physical health, and financial stress is one of the biggest triggers of difficult or poor mental health. And, and it's a challenge. It's a challenge that's been there for everyone for a long, long time. But we now know that it's actually better, like you said, to reach out, to say, you know, it, it's okay to say it's not, you know, that you're not okay, that you're struggling, and to reach out to resources like the Retail Trust um, um, and to start having that conversation. I'm passionate about uh, about the improvement of people's mental health, and 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 I know that financial stress is such a big driver in that. So do take that step um, and reach out. Awesome. And of course, um, I think the thing about reskilling is that it can be very painful sometimes, in the sense that when you've kind of built your life uh, honing a particular skill set, and then you're being told to you have to learn a brand new one, or essentially you can just save a bit more money, but I think uh, there is power in reskilling. Um, and I'm, I'm sitting with an ex Olympian, so I'm quite keen to understand your reskilling journey. Yeah. Uh, um, well, one, uh, if you are changing your career in any way in life, whether that is, you know, uh, whether you're in the forces and you need to go into commercial industry or you're an athlete or any type of individual, changing career or changing path is really, really difficult. Um, and your biggest blocker will be your fear of actually risking and, and trying to understand what you don't know because mm. you automatically think you can't do it. But actually, you just need to take that step and you can reskill all the time. You might not be the best at it, but at least you're starting that process. Awesome. And of course, I, I think um, we always want to give people action here. So I think these are things you can do to future proof your career during COVID 19. And, I think I've, I've made, I mapped out, it's not just about the hard skills, it's about the soft skills. And just to give another antidote is during the time when I, when I was out of work, when I, the current position I have now was based off networking via LinkedIn. So it's building those or honing those relationships that can go a long way and put you on the path to learning those in demand skills, which may not be on what I've mapped out on the page, but again, there are, lots of learning platforms you can use that some are free some are paid for that you can use in your spare time to really get inept and really upskill during this transition period as we come out of lockdown and of course it wouldn't be a money talk if we didn't think about ways to try and save money which everyone i'm sure loves to do so what i've mapped out very very quickly is easy ways you can kind of save money for me, it was just uh, changing my gas and electric bill. I think I saved around 300 uh, and something pounds over the uh, course of the year. And quick fact, they are removing the caps as of next month in April. Uh, so do be aware of that. Are there any particular things that resonate with you, Alex? Yeah, I, I think, uh, I think we, we already touched on it. I mean, just reducing the subscriptions uh, in your life, which just seem to be mounting up in this su subscription-based society. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, you know, we have a number of uh, applications that, you know, now we're coming out of this period, 
you know, we shouldn't try and be subscribed to them all because it's better to just get outside and enjoy the environment and the physical health elements. So definitely that. And the other one I think is, is crucial is this unplug all, you know, unused devices. We seem to be constantly plugged in, charging everything all the time. And actually it's just a small movement, isn't it? To unplug it when it's fully charged, turn the switch off. Um, and that can have such a massive impact. On the environment, exactly. And of course, um, in terms of like really good apps you can use to help you save a bit more and help you take action now. Um, so I've mapped out on the page, um, some you may be aware of some of them. Um, if you're trying to save a bit more, Plum and Chip. Uh, in terms of budgeting, Money Dashboard. If you want a kind of a more aggressive approach, you've got Clio. And of course, the uh, WageStream app, which, which you can talk about a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, WageStream, we were trying to simplify money in people's lives, and we do that with, with employers. So the employer can play a great role in improving its employee base's financial autonomy and financial freedom, and that's what we try to do with WageStream. We allow people to access their, their money when they need it um, uh, and improve cash flow, which is a crucial part of improving your financial freedom as well. Um, so what, Nick, if I just take that uh, clicker, um, it's been great to have you here to, uh, today. Uh, I think some key takeaways for me, it's been absolutely fantastic. Some f great tools and tips and tricks. Um, and we've got some key takeaways here on, 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 on the slide. But I think the reality for me is it keeps coming back to, to keeping it really simple. Mm. Um, identify the situation that you're in now mm -hmm. and then make that first step. Um, and, and, and if you take that first step and you just look at it on a micro level, um, you look at that great book, Atomic Habits, if you make those small little changes every day, uh, then that has the biggest impact in the long run. Perfect. So look, it's been really, really great uh, to be here today with Nick and Money Medics, uh, a fantastic <laughs> uh, set of resources and the Retail Trust. Um, you know, Waystream's super, super, uh, you know, proud to be a, a partner of the Retail Trust. I, I guess our main message is for, uh, for the people out there is you don't have to go it alone. You know, WageStream, we work with employers. Employers can be the most influential people in our lives. We work with employers to, to basically be able to help, uh, help their entire workforce find um, empowerment towards uh, financial autonomy and financial freedom. Um, and, uh, and for any HRDs out there who are looking at the kind of challenges ahead and how to best reward and motivate their people and, and have this transition period back into uh, the normal, normal working world, um, you know, reducing financial stress is a great way of, of being able to, to kind of uh, help your workforce. And please, by all means, just reach out to us at any time. Thank you, guys.